Shader Toy is host to a plethora of awesome shader effects that you can apply to your game. It's not as simple as copy and paste, however. The goal of this tutorial is not to show you the finer details of shaders, no. There are tons of books on this subject that you can read, and you frankly won't be much closer to actually implementing something useful in your game. The aim of this tutorial is to show you how to convert a shader from Shader Toy to one that is compatible with LibGDX. Then you can implement GDX VFX to streamline and combine your effects. So, who really wants to watch me type all of this code? Check out the tutorial, resources, and GitHub project linked in the description. If we follow the first segment, you'll have a basic LibGDX project. Make sure to paste the images into the Assets folder. Run the project and now we have an epic background! With this sweet little peach! Isn't she a cutie? So now we're going to get into shaders. Shaders are programs that basically render everything you see and allow you to add some wicked visual effects. Shader Toy has quite the selection of freely available shaders but a lot of them are psychedelic color displays not useful to game designers. We'll focus on this one that adds an underwater or drunk effect. Stop tipping that bottle! Save this shader code as a text file called underwater.frag in your assets folder. This is what we call a fragment shader. For the purposes of our example, it operates on each pixel shown on screen. I could go into the finer details of vertex shaders and other technical crap, but I don't care. Just read about it in the linked resources. Anyway, use the code from the next segment of the tutorial to load the shader in GDX. Run it. Why didn't that work? You must be thinking to yourself. Did you really think you could just copy-paste that code into libgdx and expect it to work? You fool! Thankfully, you log the errors to the console. Let's break down how we'll adjust the shader so it'll work with the sample project. The very top of the underwater.frag file, we need to add the following. This ensures that your shader will work on GWT as well as other backgrounds. HTML5 requires you to define the precision of your variables. We need to specify variables to interact with the shader. Shader Toy adds its own common variables silently in the background, much to the dismay of the lazy GDX programmer who just wants a working shader. Change the main image method to the cleaner method header that GDX requires. Shader Toy has you do some math to figure out UV coordinates, the normalized coordinates on the texture. This is just directly available in GDX. In Shader Toy, we would typically just tweak the values directly in the code and recompile to change the appearance of the shader. We don't have that luxury in libgdx. We add variables to control the speed of the animation and the amount of distortion. We'll pass those values during runtime. We also have to change the weirdly named variables from shader toy to the equivalents that we defined. iTime to uTime, for example. This is actually a poorly written shader. What is that loop doing? Erase that. We also erased the line that tints the output because that can be added by another effect later. Observe the complete shader. There are some other differences that you need to be mindful of. If you ever see any values listed with a trailing decimal point, add a zero at the end. 1.0 instead of 1. GL frag color instead of frag color. Texture 2D U texture UV instead of texture iChannel 0 UV. There are other things to look out for like variables not allowed and for loops on WebGL, but that's an exercise for the viewer. In other words, I couldn't be arsed to explain it to you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold your horses, bud. Those new values need to come from somewhere, right? We'll pass them from GDX to the shader as parameters. These values can be modified during runtime to make animated effects. Let's update the core project. Note that when you're experimenting with variables, you may get strange errors about variables not existing even though you have clearly wrote them in the shader. That's because GDX strips variables that aren't directly used in the shader. You can avoid this headache by calling shaderprogram.pedantic equals false. 
What if you want the shader to only apply to certain textures? You can switch shaders between textures, applying the effect only to the peach. Messing with shaders directly is all well and good, but it gets pretty hairy when you try to layer several effects on top of each other. Say you wanted to apply an underwater effect, tint it green, add some bloom, and make it look like a CRT. Now think about adding and removing these effects dynamically during gameplay. That would be pretty wild to code in a single fragment shader. Enter GDX VFX. This library provides a wealth of commonly used shaders and a mechanism to automatically stack the effects. No more grotesque shader management. Follow the linked instructions to set up the lib and copy the example project. Nice of them to include a water distortion effect, eh? There are many different ones to toy with. Check out Bloom, for example. I tied the Bloom value to the horizontal mouse position. Now let's combine these effects. How about Bloom in the background and Tripping Balls foreground? The secret is that you have to make sure to enable blending. VFX Manager .set blending enabled true. These default effects are nice and cozy, but they're meant for general purpose use. Sometimes you'll want something more complicated, something more specific to your game. This is a great opportunity to make your own VFX compatible shader. Take this glitch shader for example. We'll take the techniques mentioned previously to convert the shader to a GDX compatible version. This time we'll get texture input from U Texture 0 instead of U Texture because GDX VFX allows input from multiple textures. Save this shader file in your assets folder as glitch.frag. U Texture 0 and U Time are provided by GDX VFX by default. U Time is updated by the user when VFX Manager update is called. These other values need to be provided by a chain VFX effect. Check out this glitch effect class. GDX VFX Shaders ScreenSpace.Vert is a vertex shader provided by GDX VFX. Besides that, the effect is largely just getters and setters for the provided values. Rebind is called whenever those values need to be updated to the shader. Render binds the texture and applies the shader. All very basic stuff. Now you can add this effect like any other effect. That's my process from taking a shader from Shader Toy and applying it to GDX VFX. I suggest testing the shader directly in a very basic GDX project first before transforming it into a chain VFX effect. Read the errors in the log and Google them damn things. Make sure it runs well on HTML5 if you plan to target that platform. Good luck, my FX-hungry friends. Here, this is for you. You did a good job for me, $500, worth abandoning all my friends. Yeah, I almost forgot. Microsoft gave me a thousand. I think their idea was that I'd kill you. <laughs> but you know, the pity is, when I'm paid, I always follow my job through. You know that. No, C-Sharp!